So I want to start with uh, welcoming you as chair of uh, this European meeting. And I will give a very short presentation, a uh, very short talk, and then uh, we, I have a colleagues of mine and, and uh, friends who will help me with opening this conference. But I will start off with just a reflection. Do not be afraid to go out on a limb. There's where the fruit is. I actually stumbled across this quote a few years ago um, by an anonymous writer and I was thinking that he or she must have thought about research. Because I think this is what we do. This is what it's all about, doing research. Going out on a limb and trying to collect the fruit. When we break new territories and find new solutions to difficult problems, I guess that is what we are here for. To collect the fruit. To go out on that limb and... Uh, discover new solutions or new problems possibly as well. This was also my drive, my passion behind arranging uh, and inviting you to this conference. I wanted to share a small part of my world, of my trees, where I go out on a limb. And I also wanted to get together with uh, colleagues, old friends, new friends, and uh, discuss these problems even more. Some of us were part of the very first Europe European meeting in Brescia, in Italy. Uh, it was about eight years ago. Uh, I remember it very well because uh, it was my first international conference as a PhD student. I remember that I had the very great honor of having uh, Eleanor Ostrom as the discussant of one of my papers. You can probably imagine how nervous I were standing up there, knowing that she was listening to, to my speech. But I remember her kindness and all of the clever questions she gave me and uh, the very interesting discussion we had during a dinner later that same day. This talk, I think, made me really made up, make up my mind that research was what I was wanted to do and always wanted to do. So I want to send just a thought to Lynn, wherever she is right now, that she will, she's always with me somewhere in research. In the next European meeting, about three years later, we met again in Tobdiv in Bulgaria. And I remember this fondly as well. It was a very, very warm autumn day. And we were discussing during the member meeting where the next meeting should take place. And uh, I was starting to think about, well, maybe it would be interesting to invite all of you up here to Umeå. And uh, there, there the idea of this third meeting would take place here in Umeå that was born in Plovdiv in Bulgaria. So here we are again, new friends, old friends, definitely. And I want to welcome you to this meeting and I hope that we are going to have very interesting four days with meetings, inspiring talks, and uh, also have discussions that will never end. We already started in the pre-conference workshop and we had to unfortunately break the discussion to go to this opening ceremony. So once again, welcome to Umeå and this meeting. Borest Botjeme Obmelis. Welcome to Umeå. I welcome you on behalf of the Umeå Sami Association and the Sami people. Sami is the indigenous people of this part of Europe. 
the only indigenous people of Europe. And the Sami area goes from the northernmost part of Norway, Sweden and Finland into the Kola Peninsula of Russia. And uh, we are very happy that there are researchers that are interested in studying the commons, the commons of our area we have used since time immemorial. And I want to remind you that before these places had their Swedish names, before Umeå, the cultural capital of Europe this year, before it was called Umeå, the Sami name was Uppmeje. And before the Sami name Uppmeje, there was the Joik of this area. In the Sami area, every place, every animal, every person you know used to have a Joik. It's similar with singing, but it's a little different. It's a little more spiritual meaning of it. And if you close your eyes, I shall now yoik the Umeå river. And uh, then I say, Boris Botti me Sapmiesi. Welcome to Sapmi as well. It's a pleasure for me to uh, welcome you to the Faculty of Forest Sciences and to Umeå, this town. And I wish I could do a, a joik, <laughs> but um, it, it's not an ability I have. Um, I should have... Okay, um, so I'm going to give you a brief introduction to our faculty. Uh, which is spread around the country, actually. Uh, this is the major location, Umeå, uh, and we share this location with Umeå University, which, of course, is much larger than us. But here we have six departments, uh, about 450 staff, and this is the major site for teaching uh, the Master of Science in Forestry. It's also the site of the Master of Science course in Fish and Wildlife, it's the headquarters of the Future Forest Project, which you might hear of. And we have a regional office uh, for European Forest Institute uh, called Eti Nord. Then further south, we, we have Shinskatabai, uh, where we have the training of our bachelors in, in forestry. And Uppsala, that's actually the major site of SLU, the Ultuna campus, uh, where we have four departments, and it's location of our Master of Science in Forest Industrial Economy. And down in the south, we have one department in Alna, and they give uh, a two-year master course uh, called Euroforester, which actually is very much about forest policy issues. Um, and the small brown dots, by the way, are <coughs> trials, forest experiments spread around the country. So we're about 600 staff, have a turnover of 80 million euro and uh, 12 departments in all. Uh, in addition to the uh, 150 students we examine, which is not very much. I mean, we're, we're partly like a, a research institute rather than a university, I would say. We also examine about 
30 PhD students every year. We carry out some long-term environmental assessment activities, and, and the most uh, well-known is probably the National Forest Inventory, which is a very comprehensive op operation, and it's been going on uh, for 90 years. We celebrated that last year. <coughs> We deal with a lot of different subject areas. There's a lot of technical matters, a lot of biology these days, and also some social science. That's economy, and, and, and you have a, a strong department, which Camilla comes from, and maybe Bengt will be the next speaker. Bengt Tristan is the head of that department. Uh, so this is just a, a, a palette uh, giving examples of the research. Now, things are changing very fast these days. Um, and the last hundred years, for example, has seen a tremendous change, but there are, there's evidence that there will be even more rapid change. So this uh, map to the left, it is like a population density map, and it illustrates the extreme urbanization of, of Sweden as a country. Uh, today, 80% of the population is in, in, in larger towns and cities. Um, 100 years ago, 80% were living in the rural areas. Uh, and because we're dealing with, with uh, the natural environment, but also services and, and products that it provides to the population in the cities, this is a very interesting perspective. Also, values are, are changing very rapidly, and to address these issues, we, we have launched uh, the Future Forest Project. Um, and there's a representative from that project here, Annika Mossing. I don't know if she's here, but she um, might be down there um, and having some materials to show you. Anyhow, um, this project is trying to uh, assess future developments and discuss future developments uh, of the use of our forests. And I think this is an area uh, which comes rather close to the focus of this meeting. You're looking forward, but you're also looking backwards, I think. Um, and I wish you great success with this meeting. I wish the logistics works well for Camilla and, and her staff and I wish you a very <coughs> enjoyable stay here in Umeå and a nice field trip. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much indeed. I am one of the local sponsors here, so I first uh, want to welcome you to Umeå. <laughs> and if I were you, I would take a walk on the south side of the river and, and go down to the city center, go to the south side, and then take a walk there and go to a cafe called the Nybro Cafe, 50s, very nice. And then you can take a walk to the Guitar Museum. These are my favorite locations here in Umeå. I don't know how much time you have, and probably you're very busy. Uh, I <clears throat> also wanted to welcome you to the forest faculty. Uh, this is a natural science-dominated uh, faculty. I am a threatened species, and Camilla uh, also. We're very few. But this meeting, I think, is a, a start of a more of a social science in this uh, faculty. It's... Uh, Something that we are investing in is forest policy and, and, and uh, more social science, I hope. So this is uh, a good thing that uh, you're organizing this meeting right here. And um, I also want to welcome you to the forest economics department. As I said, we're very small, 20 people out of 400 here. Uh, but we, we are growing and the forest policy part is also... Agree. Uh, one of our commons, uh, so to speak, is a joint center that we have 
uh, with the University of Umeå, I thought I'd tell you as a local sponsor about that center. Uh, if I can figure this out. All right, uh, so this, is, this center was started a few years ago, uh, and we had a number of economists working on, on uh, resource economics problems that wanted to work together, so we started this center. Uh, we put it down at the university, actually, with about 30 people working at CERA. And uh, <clears throat> if you want to read more about it, we have a very lively homepage, and uh, there are lots of things uh, going on there. Uh, we have a meeting that we have actually done a little uh, more than you have. And we, this, is the, this year we had a 21st meeting uh, called the Ulver meeting on environmental resource economics. And so we do this every year. And uh, a couple of years we have had actually commons as one of our themes. It's basically economists that meet there at, at this meeting. Um, I don't know if any one of you have been there, but uh, in the 2000 meeting, for example, we had uh, uh, some of your friends, I suppose, uh, Martin Whitby and uh, Dan Bromley talking about uh, this uh, common resource problems. And then in 2005, uh, I invited Eleanor Ostrom to the meeting, and... Uh, she actually came over. She was very <laughs> curious about something called the fermented herring, uh, which uh, we, as a local sort of tradition up here, and she was very curious. So I will, I'm looking forward to the fermented herring, she said. And this was in 2005. And, and uh, we had a very good uh, meeting, of, of course, when she, she came around. So we've had some... <coughs> uh, some meetings that have focused uh, the commons as, as economists. Then. So if you want to know more about CLA, you can take a look at our, our, at our homepage. Now, <coughs> are commons important? Well, obviously I think they are important. Uh, many of the problems in environmental economics can be thought about as a, as a common property uh, problem. Uh, are we making uh, progress in, in understanding the management of the, these uh, commons problems, that, that I think, uh, as an economist, I think of this problem in terms of game theory and uh, how people uh, cooperate or not cooperate in games, and I think we have learned a lot there from the theory, but also from experiments, which institutions that work and those that do not uh, work so well. Uh, there are a number of examples, and of course Eleanor talked about uh, examples when she was uh, then, uh, how, how things can uh, pan out when you look at commons. As an economist, I, I always think about uh, the EU ETS, when we're trading at carbon, as a, it's kind of an example of an institution that works for a commons <laughs> problem, in my view. I hit upon a very interesting case uh, last week at the World Water Meeting uh, in, from Australia, which I also think can be thought of in terms of this, uh, the problem that you're discussing, and that had to do with water. And uh, it was uh, in Australia... I was very surprised to find out that they uh, grow rice and <laughs> rice in Australia. I didn't believe they did that, but actually they are doing uh, that in Australia. Anyway, they have something called the, um, let's check out the name. There is a, the Murray Darling Basin, it's uh, north of Sydney. And uh, they are trading water rights there. They have separated the, the ownership of the land from the ownership of the water. And that seems to work out uh, really well. I, I was very intrigued by that example, which I, I think about as kind of a common way of a particular institution. Anyway, uh, I again, welcome to UMIO. I hope you have a productive meeting and that you have time to see some of our comments here. For example, what, what happens down at the river. And uh, good luck with your meeting. And uh, hope to see you. Do we have any festivities in your meeting? No? Yes, we have. You we have? We actually go to the Guitars Museum. Will you? Huh? Yes, we will. <laughs> uh, very good. Yes. All right, good luck then. Thank you.
Um, I'm Peter Schultz. Good afternoon. A few years ago, uh, I was appointed by the Swedish Research Council to be the Swedish ISK delegate in the big organization. And I was for a couple of years. And then one day Camilla sent me an email and she said, well, we consider to arrange an IESC conference in Umeå, a big European conference. Uh, would you like to be involved? And I thought, oh my God, I'm the Swedish delegate. Of course I should be involved. So I, I went to the meeting. And uh, I was a few minutes late, so they were already discussing things. And I sat down and I listened. And I didn't understand anything. I'm the Swedish delegate of the International Arctic Science Committee, IASC. Well, after a while, we did, we did find uh, a, a way together into this, but I can admit my ignorance. I, I did not really think of your organization initially. Uh, now I've learned much more, and, and I'm really happy to, to see this event taking place here in Umeå. I will address a few angles from the perspective of the Arctic, uh, which I do represent. Let's see if I can get to big one. Uh, the Arctic, a uh, mysterious place, unfortunately very often poorly and stereotypically described uh, and understood. This is what meets us at Google. Google the Arctic and you will find 40 pages like this. Uh, iceberg, uh, polar bears, no people, no people in the first 40 pages. But I, I actually believe there is a, a human being there uh, looking like a polar bear, but that doesn't count. Uh, so, so this is the, the starting point. This is the Arctic too. And actually our conference is in the Arctic. Welcome to the Arctic. How does it feel being here? Well, your, your surprise is actually shared with many people here. Uh, it's, it's a bit mysterious to many people that Sweden is a part, northern part of Sweden is a part of the Arctic. And you might even want to dispute that there are no set borders of the Arctic, but we are one of the eight Arctic countries and uh, Sweden must take a responsibility when we have been given this opportunity to uh, do our part to create the sustainable development of the Arctic. And great parts of this huge area is, of course, also to be seen as a common in, in uh, one way or the other, uh, not least uh, discussed very much in, in the political context. Uh, some of you might have noticed I hesitated a bit when I pronounced the word sustainable development. This is something I, I will not dig deeply into now, but I'm quite sure many of you, all of you, will say sustainable development at some the time during this conference. Um, I hope you know what you mean when you say it, because my understanding is that we mean quite a lot of different things. And it depends, it depends on so many different uh, variables what we actually end up in for kind of a definition. And my simple advice is generally to have a very focused, in situ understanding of, of this concept when we want to apply it. Uh, the Arctic discussion is also very much about the melting ice, uh, climate warming, uh, etc. Let's remember that people live in the northern area too. Uh, four million people live in the Arctic, and a substantial part of, of this population is indigenous peoples in all the eight countries, more or less. And uh, their sustainable development is of great concern to all of us, uh, which has also been addressed by previous research. And you are very well aware of all the consequences that uh, global warming, climate change, rising sea levels, can cause us. I will not take it too deeply. The Arctic is unfortunately also an area today uh, where a lot of different actors are very interested to find a way into it by different reasons. It might be oil and gas, it might be new transport routes, 
uh, or with the idea that this is a place that we must be concerned of together, so we don't destroy it. There are definitely not many places at the Arctic left on Earth today. And uh, politicians do pay a great deal of interest and respect to the Arctic, uh, which was clear when Barack Obama visited Sweden last year. He should have visited Putin, but he decided to boycott the Russians, and he went to the now former um, Prime Minister Danfeld, and they declared together how important it is, not least for research, to make great efforts to uh, uh, help the process towards democratic and sustainable development of the Arctic. And Sweden, Sweden can be described as kind of a black sheep of the Arctic family in some contexts, since we were the last country to enter the chairmanship of the Arctic Council. Uh, we were the last country to uh, produce an Arctic national strategy report. And we were the last country to establish a university-based Arctic research center. But we did so two years ago, and we did it here in Umeå, and we are very happy about it because it makes us a bit more even player uh, with the other countries, and uh, they certainly want our collaboration. And I can tell that today, this Arctic Center um, uh, has more than 200 affiliated researchers. Fifteen years ago, we did establish another center, the Center for Sami research that has for a decade and a half now had a very successful and important position in indigenous research, definitely in Sweden, but also internationally. Uh, and I just want to put to your attention that among our projects is one new, very uh, relevant and, and quite big project focusing on the different economic sectors of the North and how uh, the global down to the local interplay in creating an opportunity for people to live here, for nature to be uh, protected in one way or the other, and for the commons to be uh, dealt with as uh, clever as possible. Uh, so with that, good luck with your conference. Uh, it's a most impressive program. Thank you.